Welcome back. We're doing a home decor inspo video. I thought I would go over this before I get too much further with like doing things and making changes. So we get the background inspo first and then you can see <laughs> just how much I butcher. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Things have been turning out really well. I'm really happy living here and I thought it would be kind of chill to just like go over what I've been looking at and thinking. I was looking at the video I did like three years ago, three or four now, just to see how much my style has changed, my interior style, which I was curious to see if I like was still just pulling the same images over and over again, but they have changed actually. And it's definitely like developed and I feel like my execution has developed in a good way that I feel like I'm more accurately creating my homes in a way that is how they look in my head, if that makes sense. I think it's always good to be slow, try to get things second hand, and just add piece by piece. Okay, I thought like, let's just go through the vibes and then I'm gonna break it down into category of specific ideas I'm having for different rooms and kind of point out the things that I like. Some inspo that is my ideal house. You know, obviously a lot of these are just really beautiful architecture and they're probably by the sea in Greece or Portugal or something. And therefore, obviously that's not what my home's gonna look like, but I just thought I'd share some of them. Let me just show you like an ideal perfect setup. Colors, vibe. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to use the word vibe extensively in this video. Just what I like. not saying this in a derogatory sense, I am a rather messy person. I do like mess though, and it works for me. It feels homey to me. And I'm not like pulling inspiration to have mess. I naturally find myself in a more beautifully chaotic <laughs> environment at times. And that's just how my brain works. Like I'm not fight, I'm not trying to fight against that. Obviously there are ways in which I have upped my cleanliness over the years and I think I will continue to do that. But you know, we're working with what's in my brain. So this is my mess respectfully board. And I think as I've pondered home decor recently, two really big themes that I think we're just gonna come back to in this video is this, you know, beautiful mess. <laughs> archetype, hot mess archetype. You know, is it the manic pixie dream girl of interiors? As I say that, perhaps. I don't I don't know if that's an exact equivalent. Other topic which goes hand in hand here, but that is the right amount. I'll go into that one in a second. But let's just go over some beautiful mess because I think it's very intriguing to like see photos that are, you know, not standardly clean. You can see that a place is very lived in. And I'm at home a lot and I just, I like that environment better. Like if I was in a sterile place, I think it would drive me crazy. Er, <laughs> this bookshelf which is perfectly done. Obviously it's also like a je ne sais quoi, like you can't just replicate this. I'm not gonna go out and try to like replicate the exact way the books are on the shelf because that's the whole point of like the je ne sais quoi is that it's like very specific to the owner, to the person's home, which is why I think it's very endearing to look at. It feels soft and like integrated into like someone's real world perhaps is why it feels like nice to look at in my opinion. But then, okay, we're gonna go into the second topic, which is right amount. I find there to be a very fine line between having too much stuff in a room and not enough stuff 
and the way that it's done is very specific to hit that that nice amount of having the right amount of stuff in a room having it displayed in a way that is not overwhelming having like interior design is a very hard craft you have to have a really good eye for it i like i know what i like but i think sometimes it's hard for me to find that right line i've had places in the past that did not have enough stuff in them and then it like leaves you feeling like a little empty but then one extra piece of furniture that maybe you don't need can leave a place feeling really weird and chaotic and just not right and I find that very interesting so I feel like that is the balance that I'm interested in studying and like also in in striking in my own environments especially if I'm drawn to like a more maximalist view even something like this like look we have these like little stools behind the chair, like lamp, things hanging on the wall, a chest set, another bench, books up top. I think it's definitely like, you know, it's always good to like bring a room up too. So there's, you know, high, high and low, but high is in tall. A beautiful mess, some might say, but to me, perfection, you know? Like what, what is even going on in here? A lot of books just in the middle of the room, but somehow it's working for me. For me, that works. What else do we have here? You know, some like pillows on the floor. Almost like curated mess. <laughs> you know, like here we have a chair kind of just hanging out in front of some bookcases. Like it seems like it shouldn't work, but it does. Or like this little night, stand stool right here yeah i don't know i like looking at people's lived in homes maybe i just feel so passionately about this because there's such a stigma around having you know somewhat of a messy place or just being messier in general and i think that there is a lot of beauty in mess and i feel like our places should reflect us and i also think there's more intimacy and in allowing your place to be how it is and allowing people like into your home when it is in a pure reflection of that and instead of having to have your house like spotless for when people come in obviously cleaning is one thing and like making it nice and like being respectful of guests is nice but i do think that it's okay to like have a lived in space and i believe that's my core um, and then going into here like some of these examples of the right amount the right amount just i really like how you know everything's kind of in its place i think it does kind of go back to the high low theory though of having some furniture pieces that are like very grounded and clean and then mixing in more pieces or like like a lot of art or a lot of books or etc this one i looked at this for a while the other day and i was like i just i admire how this feels like it really works for me but i wouldn't think to like put a floor lamp right next to also like a cool hanging lamp and then have a little side table with a chair and i don't know this this is the right amount of stuff to me. It's something, it's just the right amount. I don't know why, I don't know when, it's just a feeling that I have when I look at it that feels like it's the right amount of stuff. All these little pillows on the couch, you also have little stuff on the coffee table. You have a lot of books, you have a lot of little things back there, you have a lot of art on the walls. Like in theory, is it too much? I also think a lot of it is the too much stuff can't be like livable stuff. And I think that's like where I get caught up. It's like my keys are hanging out or like my sunglasses are everywhere. Like little nicks and there's little pieces of things that maybe are not, they are out of place. So these scenarios, these are things that are actually are in place. They just, there's just still a lot of things, but they're in their place, I think is a thing. Also very much into print mixing right now. Okay, now I'm gonna go into some ideas I have 
for the house. You'll notice this is just, I took an extra sheet I had and draped it over just to like kind of get an idea of what this would look like, but I wanna put a couch cover over my couch. I've had this couch for like five or six years. I never was like super nuts on the gray, but I love the couch. It's very comfortable. It's a good couch. So I'm looking into just getting a linen couch cover. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do like a pure white like this one or possibly maybe just a more natural. I do really like this blue and red. I don't know if I'm gonna like commit to that though. Um, but I thought these were some nice examples of couch covers or like fabric textiles that are interesting to look at. Um, I'm probably gonna go more plain with that couch, but maybe do a cover and then um, there'll be more examples of this, but like more colored pillows on top, I think will like make it more interesting. My favorite piece of furniture is a day bed. I recently got a day bed for this room. I really love it. I'm glad I did it. I think it is a really nice grounding piece to have in here. You can see out the windows a lot easier. I am not gonna keep it. You can see that it has the red cover on it. This quilt actually goes on my bed. Yeah, I don't know what it is about the day bed. I think that it almost invites a nap <laughs> is why I like it because it's like a daytime, it's a daytime napper, you know? You're being invited to take a nap via furniture and I think it would be rude <laughs> not to oblige. And that's why I love a day bed. Also so beautiful, this, mm, uh, uh, that like scratches my brain in a really nice way. This chair is not a day bed, but I just thought it was really beautiful. <laughs> um, this, what a beautiful photo. This is kind of like maybe something I'd do on the day bed. I do like the idea of a red stripe. I think it's very classic and beautiful, but yeah, you're just gonna crawl up over there and doze off after you've been in the sun for a few hours like forget about it this color combo mm, so beautiful a blue white stripe with a little red bench and red pillow no i like i like how primitive it looks it's beautiful i want to live there this one i mean super so beautiful so so beautiful i love him i really liked his apartamento um interview and I like his art a lot. My house was a little more clean. I feel like I'd go in this direction. Oh, but I am gonna decide on what I want to cover it with. Um, that kind of goes into this bed quilt. Really been liking, kind of goes into the day bed, but a mixed, mixed pillows, kind of like mixed quilts, and like patterns together. This was kind of the inspo for the red and white um, quilt that I did find that I got at the Rose Bowl. I kind of want to get some floral sheets eventually. It's not on the top of my priorities right now, so I probably won't do that anytime soon. But yeah, liking the look of a big... I love this one actually a lot. It looks like a giant towel almost, but I think it works really nicely. I know I talked in an older video that I was thinking about getting a cobalt blue rug for in here. In my mind, it still works. I still think it could work, but everyone I spoke to about it, every single person vetoed. Like they really were like, do not do that. Don't get a giant blue rug. It's gonna be way too intense. It's just gonna be a lot. And they might be right, and I would get it from Etsy and then I wouldn't be able to return it. And so then I would have a very expensive mistake on my hands and so I haven't fit. Um, but I am considering covering the day bed in a cobalt blue fabric, which brings me to my next point, which is blue. That's the topic, is blue. I'm really attracted to a cobalt blue. It all started with these sheets in bed made these sheets is this for in bed I'm pretty sure this is the same okay I guess they still do have this through oh, okay here we go I found it okay they came out with these cobalt blue sheets I think about them all the time they're sold out and I never bit because I thought that maybe they'd be too intense and now I can't stop thinking about them and I think if they were in that room and you just had a nice pop of blue in that room it would be really nice and I just haven't been able to stop thinking about that shade of blue and then as I was looking through oh this is the in bed one also I think maybe um as I've been looking through 
inspo like I've just been drawn to a really nice bright blue in a room I think it's a decision for sure but I think it's really striking um, even a light blue I'm not against um, there's something that about it that I just like can't get off of right now um, so I'm deciding on a, a blue something a nice big blue something what is it gonna be I'm not sure yet I'm leaning towards daybed cover also um, place that does natural dyeing in Frogtown in LA sway um, and the color, I happened to go over there with a friend last weekend and one of the colors they have on rotation for this month is the perfect cobalt blue. It changes at the beginning of the month, which means I really need to go tomorrow to drop off a sheet. And I think I might just have them dye an old sheet that has a hole in it and make that blue. And then I think I could cover this with the blue. And then it's like I'm upcycling the sheet that has a hole in it to a different color and that's ideal and it's the exact blue that I was looking at for so I think that is gonna be what I end up doing. You might be right about the rug like maybe I do just need to go with a more muted rug. I am mad about it. Okay this video honestly was supposed to come out before the last video when I was talking about making the light fixture but I'll show you some of the inspos that I was pulling. I made I got some wire and I'm gonna make I think a light fixture for this room, or I'm going to attempt to, we'll see. I think it's gonna go okay. Like this feels very nice. I think I could do something similar to that. Um, I love this like paper mache. I honestly could try to make something out of paper mache or like a paper pulp out of old boxes. I was looking at how to make pulp or like paper pulp like that, like kind of a thicker paper mache that I could do with boxes that I get from stuff. And I thought that was a really fun project to kind of also you know, upcycle boxes. But then I'm like, maybe I'll make a chair out of the paper pulp. <laughs> this sheer, oh, that's so nice. I don't think I'm gonna do that in here, but it would be kind of nice if I got like a few covers almost and then it would filter the light in like super warm. I'm in the process of repainting my kitchen because to be honest, they didn't finish painting it and it's two different colors. I did the kitchen tiles in the last video they look good. I still, this is a good reminder that I need to fill in the last two pieces. That changed my kitchen actually a lot. It's so much more enjoyable for me to look at now. Like I think it makes the whole room look so much better. I also kind of want to do, hmm, let's see here, a pop of red in the kitchen. That's a very small thing. Maybe some little sheer red curtains. And maybe I need to get a little plant for in there is also like a sweet little kitchen fern. Kitchen, I'm still just kind of figuring out like what I want and like rearranging constantly on the counters because I do have more counter space than I've had in probably any of my other rentals. Let me show you some color combos I really like. Mmm, purple and red, so nice. Mmm, so nice. Just red, I do really love red in a house also with wood, like I think is really beautiful. Kind of just, those are some nice mixed colors. This is not my palette, but I do like, kind of like the mixed print on the wall mixed with the bed spread. That's nice. Also not my vibe, but I don't know, that's just a beautiful photo. Red and blue, purple and blue, really nice colors. I always love a green, but my last place was so sage green that I feel like I kind of left that phase behind for the time being. And then the only last project I have in my mind is um, some little tiny rugs in my bathroom and do like a few mix matched rugs, kind of like this is what I'm thinking. I haven't decided what which ones I'm gonna go for, but I kind of pulled some little mini ones off of Etsy and I think that that will kind of make it feel a little cuter in there. Yeah, those, that's what I've been thinking about. That's my inspo. Hopefully you got a little inspo as well. If you have any ideas, would love to hear them below. I will see you all so soon in the next video.